my name is Kees Poot. I'm uh, from Holland and I'm uh, a different approach here in this whole uh, exhibition. Um, I'm more in the medical industry. And uh, as you know, the audio video industry is, uh, is running also in the hospitals and especially in the operation room, OR integration, robotics, IOT. Um, artificial intelligence, AI is very popular now also in the medical industry. Um, my history is medical. I walk around, I don't know a lot, but medical is my, um, is my future, was my history and future. I will guide you to uh, a little bit history in the medical industry. Uh, a little bit, uh, I don't show you dirty pictures of operations and that kind of stuff, but I guide you from surgical 1.0 to 4.0, where we see it that will be the future, or is it now and will be more the future. In the history 1.0, surgery is uh, done by hand. And you can imagine what pictures will I show up now. Anyway, uh, the surgery 1.0 is, is done uh, drilling holes in a head. It sounds dirty, but it's the way it is. It's uh, bone setting, bloodletting, and plastic surgery way back. Um, 600 years before Christ. And uh, the father of the modern surgery is Mr. Shurata. I know you forget this, but I show you a little bit history to the future. Always good for, um, for your uh, trivial uh, questions at home. So here we have a very uh, yeah, decent picture, what everybody recognizes. I don't know if you know the atomic lessons from uh, Rembrandt, a famous, uh, a famous uh, picture from Rembrandt. And actually, that's uh, a little bit of history. So we, um, we go back to 1846, and um, he was a sort of surgeon, uh, Dr. Morton. He was a dentist, and uh, he, he did the first surgical successful uh, without anesthesia. I know I put in some medical terms, so hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. Um, so this is a little bit history, 1846. And of course, you have a theater. The future, you know already, that's a surgical theater, but I like to show the history. So you see what's going on in the surgical theater. And we have the students or uh, coming up doctors or uh, existing doctors watching the surgeon. It's good it's black and white, so we don't see blood. So for the next 100 years, there's not much changed. So we have surgery 2.0 because then electricity came in. And we had electricity and uh, went already in a lot of improvements. We had power to your elbow, operation lights. We had endoscopic cameras. And we had electro surgery units coming in when we had electricity. Harmonic scampels and uh, otoscopic shavers. Shavers to do minimum invasion surgery. Ultrasound, of course, also. So. When there was uh, MIS, minimum invasion surgery, we uh, went to the endoscopy areas. So the first endoscopy was by uh, Mr. Bolzini in 1806. He made a sort of light guide and uh, he invented the fiber, uh, first fiber optic endoscopic. It was in 1957, not so much long ago, but he made the first camera uh, for endoscopic operations. In 1970 to 1990s, adding a camera to the light and the endoscopy. Nice cameras, you see here now a lot of different cameras, but the history is there. So now we go with surgery 3.0. We have electronics. So in the electronics revolution, we had trolleys with displays, we had panels with uh, to control the lights, the cameras, the electronic operation beds. We have the surgical lights and later on we have the surgical lights with, and with the cameras inside the lights. 
So we had the CCD cameras, the RS-232 communication, old stuff, programmable controllers, com computers of course, digital signal processing and flat panel displays. And a little bit IT. Maybe IT only by pushing buttons to switch signals and that's what it is. At that time, a really nice revolution. So, the in integration of the components, um, these are as of today. And um, this is an integrated OR with a C-arm, a bat, uh, endoscopy towers, displays, a little bit of radiology, um, some trolleys, I said that, in-wall panels, displays, and that is as of today. So it looks great, but what's the problem? It's a closed system. So uh, it's pro video systems like HDMI and SDI, are only video, no machine data. It's a current video over IP systems use a network switch only as priority matrix. So no access to variable data from attached systems. So it's a closed system in OR, mainly from the main manufacturer. He controls actually the, the total system. So no, no interoperability with other manufacturers' equipment. If the surgeon or the hospital wants other equipment in OR, they say it's not compatible, we cannot work, we cannot talk with each other. So um, existing video over IP system cannot run over hospital LAN at the end. So manufacturers, I know examples, Olympus, Pentax, Fuji, they install an operation room and they cannot have another brand in OR. The current state of the most operation theater surgery 3.0 is no open standard with other manufacturer systems. So as I said, if you choose Philips, GE, Olympus, Pentax, Medical, then they don't work together or talk together. So, and 5% of the endoscopy imaging systems are not connected to the network, and that's an example in the UK. That counts also for Germany and I think the whole Europe. Um, no inclusion of uh, artificial, uh, in, uh, AI and AR in assi uh, assisting decision making. So there's no interconnection to make decisions that a signal or data must go to somewhere else. No data acquisition of the health and usage of surgical equipment. So no do data exchange with uh, endoscopy, CT, MRE, breast, mammography, etc. Physical on-site servicing is required. Most endoscopy is performed with shared mobile cards. So a trolley cards they share with other equipment. C-arms, ultrasound, patient monitoring are standalone systems. They're from the same manufacturer. And uh, invaluable data is ignored. Now we come to the future surgery 4.0, IoT, Internet of Things. Okay, why is IoT important? I read it. We know that the devices are connected different in different words, together to improve quality of life, society and industry. That's IoT. So what about healthcare? So in IoT and uh, um, in the physical world currently, they're being connected by a common language. You recognize a lot of these things and you know already that um, manufacturing, sports, cars, wearables are connected with each other. Data are shared by uh, different uh, uh, sources, travel, smart homes, cars to, uh, with each other to give each other information. That's IoT, so smart offices, uh, health, uh, health clubs. When you come in a health club with your wearable, with your iPhone, you know already that you can move on with your, what you did the, 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 a few days before. Traveling, we know where we go. Uh, they remember the, the, the link to the hotels is there. Manufacturing, uh, our connection with smart cities to do warehousing, etc. So this. This figure is already connected by a common language.
So connecting healthcare remains the sleeping giant of the internet things, internet of things, applications. Medical is a very slow industry. What we see here is very high tech, fast, fast uh, 4K, 8K, uh, 10 gig, uh, name it. Healthcare is always a little bit behind. The reason is that equipment needs to be approved, needs to be proven that it works, and all the regulations to install in a hospital are very tight. So we think the sleeping giant is the medical area. So what about the future? What will the IoT operating room look like? Should it be connected? Oh, I go too fast. We think that medical IT uh, connect all the, the, the sources from different brands to each other with different partners like ZV, Big Blue, Netgear, that we have an independent of the manufacturer connect all these sources together and, and bring the data and live stream video to the operation room. So these are the companies that join forces that we uh, do a standard-based video and control management system to final delivery surgery, surgical 4.0 in the next generation of the operation room and hospitals and beyond. And beyond, I mean also robotics, um, hybrid rooms, and of course the, uh, the bigger OR rooms. So we think that this can, can grow organically, uh, organically into like this. We have a lot of cameras, data, audio, um, network surgery, training, so we think big data, you can read it, uh, financing, we can filter all together with a man and machine interface, so all this data will talk to each other, independent which manufacturer, and, uh, and get, get, get the data what we want, and also a better healthcare. That is the, the main source of our, our business. So we take homes, what does surgery 4.0 for medical IT means to you? So the 4.0 surgery, open architecture and the IoT, Internet of Things. Um, the number of manufacturers cannot, uh, with the audio video over IP or control systems, cannot interoperate with each other. None. And uh, so all current video over IP systems in operation rooms can only exchange video with its own equipment. So that means their own brand, you need to uh, uh, add on their own uh, one manufacturer to extend your operation room or extend uh, data outside the operation room. So supplier lock-in. Monopoly, no embedded parallel data network for device status, and no interoperability with other systems, so no interactive with other suppliers. We think uh, with Four Medical IT, we can uh, send and receive audio, video, and data from all those manufacturers listed, from the SDVOE team and the Alliance, and uh, performance-based metrics, operation cost reduction, that's the uh, very important for a lot of hospitals. Um, multiple paths of independent devices access, interoperation with efficiency systems, uh, hospital information systems, ERP and PACs. That's mainly, mainly radiology PACs. And uh, feedback loop for continuous improvement. That's data, audio, video. So I hope you enjoy a little bit uh, guide to the operation room and um, we think a big wave is coming also in the medical industry and uh, our partners are there. Thank you very much.